Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. What time is it, Claudia? Just a little before ten. So late. Hmm, I should be getting home. Oh, stay a little longer, Mama. What do you want to go home for? That parrot of mine has an insatiable appetite for conversation. Haven't I? I should think yours would have been satiated by now. <laughs> Claudia, are you sure you don't want to come and spend the night at my house? I'm sure, Mama. Well, as you like, if you don't mind being alone. It may sound silly, Mama, but I feel sort of closer to David here. His pipe's over there on the shelf, coat hanging in the closet. That's not silly at all. I understand very well. But I should think you'd feel very close to David even without the pipes and coat. Very close, Mama. He's in Chicago. How many times did he call today? Only once. He said everything was going beautifully. The board committee was very enthusiastic about the freight terminal. The money would be raised. And, oh, Mama, I'm glad it was so successful. It sort of makes it all worth it. There you go again. All worth what? Worth David's being away for two nights, of course. Oh. If the Chicago business hadn't worked out, it'd be such a, such a waste. Being apart doesn't harm people who love each other. It may hurt them, but never harms them. I heard. I heard awfully. Lonesomeness hurts. How's your finger? Fine now. It doesn't hurt me a bit. Have you told David about Bluff? Mm, no, I thought I'd wait till he got back. Mama, what do you suppose David is doing right now? Right now? Mm -hmm. Ten o'clock? Oh, sitting around with some of the men discussing things? David's the handsomest. Well, he may be the handsomest of men, but right now you're not the handsomest of wives, not by a long shot. Oh, <laughs> Ben, I look awful. I don't even dare peek in the mirror. But I'll look very glamorous tomorrow when David comes home. Wait and see. You think you'll look glamorous tomorrow just because you're going to bed with your front hair in bobby pins? And cold cream on my face and oil on my nails. Hush and... up, hush. I don't want to hear any more of your beauty secrets. I might end up looking like you. <laughs> in a way... A very little way. It's a good thing David went away. What very little way is that? Well, a woman needs a little time to herself to... Well, keep herself up as well as she should. Who told you? What do you mean, who told me? I'm a woman, aren't I? Oh, that's right. The way you act most of the time, I keep forgetting you're going to be a mother. Mm, David doesn't forget. His future son received an airmail letter from him this morning. He sent him all his love. You'd think he'd been gone a year. Well, if you're going to be glamorous by tomorrow morning, I'd better be getting home and let you get started. I'm not the least little bit sleepy. It's funny, I'm never sleepy when David isn't around. Very funny. Mama, does my hair seem dry to you? From over here. Mm. Dampish. It is wonderful, just right to put it up. You know, Mama, I don't see whether men have any right to mind about a woman going to bed with bobby pins in her hair. When they go to bed without shaving first the same thing, isn't it? Don't ask me. Ask a man. I did. He minds. Too bad. Good night. Good night, Mama. You don't want to stay? You sure? I'm sure, Claudia. Just the way you feel about your home, that's the way I feel about mine. But you're alone, Mama. So are you. Tonight. Well, that's only one night. Well, it's only one lifetime, too. <gasps> Maybe that's him. That's he, Claudia. When I think of the money I spent on your schooling, given my love. Hello, David. Oh, darling, where are you? Oh, I, I miss you terribly. No, but I'm fine. I mean, I'm as fine as I could be all alone. What's new? How did everything go? Oh, I'm glad, darling. Mama's been here. She's been here all evening. Oh, Mr. Carrington sends me his regards. Well, you send them right back. I mean, you send him mine back. Darling, this is awfully expensive. When will you be home? I said I was fine, except I miss you. 
No, I'm not sad. Goodbye. I love you. Lots of them. Goodbye. Yes. Goodbye. Sweet dreams. Goodbye. Mama, is he... Mama? Oh, she sneaked out on me, Shakespeare. She thought I wanted to be alone with David. Well, now I'm alone with you. Come on, kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, Shakespeare, are you as lonesome for another cat as I am for David? Because if you are, well, I'd feel awful for you. Come on now, baby. We sit right here on the nice soft sofa and we'll die. Just a few more sights before we go to bed. Just one or two. Maybe just one. Stop tickling my ear. Go away now. Go away. Mm, my back is stiff. Shakespeare, please don't. I thought you like having your ear tickled. No, I don't. I hate it. Go away. Do you always sleep on the sofa when I'm not here? Darling, it's me. Hmm? What? David. David, where'd you come from? <laughs> From Chicago. But what time is it? Is it tomorrow already? Three o'clock, time you were in bed. Or were you waiting up for me? Oh, David, I didn't know it, but I'd wait up for you forever. Don't you ever dare go away again. I've missed you so. Don't worry, I won't. That's why I came back. Did you hate it as much as I did? Don't talk, just kiss me. Hmm. I hated it more. But just a minute ago, I, I talked to you in Chicago. Yeah, I took the next plane back because you sounded as if you were getting along so well without Don't me. Don't fool yourself. <laughs> Say, you look lovely. I do? You never fix yourself up like that for me. Were you expecting somebody Don't else? Don't be silly. I was just... Dis- Good heavens, I just remembered. You were expecting somebody else? My hair, my nose, my nails, my <laughs> bathrobe. Very stunning. Very. David, I was supposed to look glamorous for you, but not tonight. Tomorrow. You want me to go away and then come back again? Don't even joke about it. I love you. Kiss me. Mm. Are you tired terribly? Would you like something to eat? Kiss me. Mm, I'm not tired. I'm not hungry. You look cute. I look awful. I'm embarrassed. Oh, so this is how wives walk around when husbands aren't around. They... they... Is this the way you look all day when I'm out? It is not. David, tell me. Tell me everything that happened while you were gone. I told you when I telephoned. What happened here? Here, nothing. What could happen? Anything. Oh, well, nothing How's Shakespeare? Shakespeare, he insisted on getting into bed with me last night. He knew I was lonesome. That cat is this husband's best friend. (laughs) How's mother? She's fine, too. And you were feeling all well again? I always felt well. Now I feel perfect. I'm even getting sleepy. So am I. Where's Bluff? Let's go to bed. You need a shave. Darling, what's that bandage on your finger? Bandage? Oh, bandage. What for? Oh, I must have cut myself or something. Yes, you must have, but how? Well, how does one cut oneself? (laughs) You could probably manage to do it with a blunted tomato. Nope, that's not how I did it. Guess again. (laughs) Darling, no games tonight. Just you tell me how you did it. Straight off. Boom. Just like that. I cut it. No. (laughs) Yes, I did. You asked me how. Out of a piece of glass. Did you get any glass in it? Of course not. How did you know? I washed it. Anyway, it's too small a cut. It's just a scratch. There couldn't be anything in it but itself. Now can we go to bed? What piece of glass did you cut it on, darling? David, can people sue you for breaking their windows? Well, sure they can. Claudia, whose window did you break? Oh, I didn't do it. I'm not responsible at all, but... We could sue them right back for my cutting my finger on the window, couldn't I? You don't sue for a scratch. Well, can you sue for a dog? What dog? Bluff, of course. How many dogs have we got? Well, if he was... Claudia, where is Bluff? Oh, David, I I wasn't going to tell you till you had a good night's sleep because nothing's really wrong anymore. Now, come on. Come on. Where is he? In the hospital. What? In the dog and cat hospital. David, why did you have to ask me about that scratch on my finger? It's all your fault. My fault? Yes. His? I should have had you locked up before I went to Chicago. What happened? You don't have to look so worried. Bluff is all right now. He only has three stitches on his right paw and one on his tail. 
The very tip of his tail. Oh, yes, and a few under his stomach. He must look like a patchwork quilt. I left him at the hospital in case he needed help or something. We can bring him home tomorrow, though. Bluff and your finger on a window pane that isn't ours. Can we sue or be sued? Not at Mama. That reminds me, David. I did about half the jigsaw puzzle you gave me. It's not so hard. Well, this one is murder. Claudia, I can't put the pieces together. Now, tell me. Where did Bluff... I took him for a walk, and he was walking backwards or something when a little French poodle started to bark at him. Well, poodles are scrappy little dogs. It startled Bluff, and he jumped. No, not exactly jump ducked would be more like it, more... Jump ducked. Mm. What's the difference? What happened? David, aren't you glad to be home? What happened, and then I'll tell you. Well, Bluff scared a grocer's boy. It really wasn't Bluff's fault. It was the poodles. We ought to sue that... Poodle. Claudia, what happened? The grocer's boy, he ducked and... No, jumped would be more like it. Yes, he jumped. And he let go of his cart. It was full of things like potatoes and oranges. And, and... it spilled. And well, what's so terrible about that? Oh, if that had been all, it wouldn't be terrible. But that isn't what happened. It didn't spill. It, uh, it, uh, ran away. Mm, not far, because it was stopped by the window of a drugstore. That's when it happened. What happened? I cut my finger. Oh. But there was no glass in it. I washed it. Aren't you glad? What was your finger doing in that window? Bluff ran after the cart. That's how he got cut, too. You sure you haven't forgotten anything else? Positive. Except it cost us ten dollars to sew up Bluff. And my band-aid cost ten cents. And the drugstore man is going to sue the grocer, and the grocer is going to sue us, and... I think we ought to sue somebody, don't you? And this little finger of yours with this little bandage on it is... All the proof I have that this story isn't pure fabrication. Would I invent a story like that? I don't know. I just hoped you would. Let's go to bed. Oh, David, not with you looking like that. Why did you have to go and notice my finger? Now your coming home is all spoiled. You little dope. Come here. Let me tell you something. What? Why I love you, I'll never know. I know. Because I love you. Oh, David, I missed you so. I can understand why. Darling, I'll take the bobby pins out of my hair if you'll shave. Hmm? I don't mind the bobby pins. I don't mind them at all. <laughs> These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. On days when shopping seems to hold one irritation after another, there's one good way to forget your irritation, and that's to pause for ice-cold Coca-Cola. Nowadays, you see that familiar red cooler in your favorite food store as well as in lunchrooms and service stations. And always it seems to carry the message, take it easy, pause and refresh yourself. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor, who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. Refreshes.